Did you know that over a million new businesses launch each year, yet nearly 40% fail in their first year and 80% within five? I'm Derek Schmidt, and I don't want you to become another statistic. That's why I started the Entrepreneur Bootcamp Podcast. I'm going to use real-world experience and straightforward advice to help you navigate through the rough waters of entrepreneurship. Whether you're drafting your first business plan or aiming for new heights, this is your toolkit for however you define success. Let's dive in. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode. Today we're going to dig into keyword research, and then we're going to look at how you can create an audit, SEO audit for your website, and then you can use AI to help you create some valuable content for your website. And finally, how do you promote that content? I've got a special surprise for you at the end. I also have developed a custom chat bot for ChatGPT which will automate a lot of this and make it a lot smoother for you. So you don't have to memorize some of the prompts that we'll be going over in the AI part of this video. So follow along with me and let's go ahead and get started. First, in order to figure out what you need to write for, you need to have an idea on who your target audience is. Who are you speaking to? How do they consume information online? What type of information? are they consuming online? And then finally, how do you start ranking for that information so that they hopefully find your website, you establish value, and they start to know and trust you. So there are a few different ways you can go about doing keyword research for your website. Basically, when you start doing this, I want you to think of it in terms of each page or post on your website should have one primary keyword, right? One focus keyword that you're focusing on. Now we'll include things in there like semantic keywords or Otherwise, another term for it, synonyms. So we'll include some keyword variations in there. This has evolved over the years. So generally, a good rule of thumb is you want to have a semantic keyword or a keyword between two and a half to four percent. So out of every hundred words, you want that keyword or semantic closely related keyword to show up about two to four times, right? Then you have things like internal links, external links, um, et cetera. This is a really good place to pause and talk about what is uh, search engine optimization. When you're looking at search engine optimization, you're primarily looking at it through three different categories. So you have on-site SEO, that's your meta descriptions, meta titles, the quality of your content, the length of your content, how fresh is it, URL structures, internal links, keyword usage, site depth, rate of audience engagement, redirects, duplicate content, social tags, broken links, outbound links, and image alt and title tags. When it comes to technical SEO, you're looking at things like site speed, crawlability, is the website secure? Is it mobile friendly? What's the overall user experience like? And then for offsite SEO, these are things that include like your local citations, your backlinks, any kind of link building or outreach you're doing even social media posts, PR and article submissions, guest posts, and directory listings. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what I want you to focus on when it comes to SEO, if you take anything away from this episode, I want you to focus on creating content that your target audience finds valuable and they like, and they share, and they engage with. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the user experience that you create. And that's what I believe Google's primary job is if you look back to back in the day when the search engines were Ask Jeeves and Yahoo.com and AOL.com, et cetera, you would basically do a search. You'd get a list of search results. You'd have to sift through that. Google came out and they changed the game. And basically they said, okay, we're going to take whatever search term a user is searching and we're going to find the most related content available on the web. And we're going to sort and order those based on the page authority the authority of the domain and how valuable we believe that content is. So when it comes to ranking your content, it's not just about creating valuable content, but it's about creating a great user experience. And some of the ways that Google knows that you have a great user experience are things like your bounce rate, how long people stay on your website. Do they click through to other pages? Do they share it? And when we have other Google products like Google analytics and stuff, it's very easy for them to determine this, right? So at the end of the day, Google's primary job is to serve the user with the most relevant piece of content and deliver a great user experience. And they're going to reward you for that. All right, so let's take a look at how we can go about doing some keyword research. First, what I'm gonna do is show you some free ways you can do this to get an idea of what people are searching for. 
then we'll dabble into some of the paid tools that I recommend or that we use in our agency, Design Loud. So to get started, go ahead to Google. And of course, that's google.com. Now, when you're there on the search bar, start typing in your keyword. So for example, something my target audience may be searching for uh, when it relates to the agency is how to advertise on Hulu. Now, before I hit enter, I want you to see some of the suggested searches that come up in this dialog box, because that may give you some other ideas that you can either incorporate into your content or across different posts or pages, right? So that's one of your ideas there. Now, this won't give you search volume and search terms, but there are Google browser extensions uh, for Google Chrome specifically, and maybe even Firefox and a couple others that will give you that search volume. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, as I scroll down a little bit more, there's this people also ask section. If I start clicking on any of these, and I'm being mindful of which ones I'm clicking on, because based on what I click on is basically going to give me more questions or things people ask related to that category. So for example, this, how much does it cost to advertise on streaming services? If I click on and expand that, notice that more questions come up underneath that are related to that search term. Again, I just clicked through a couple, and now I'm getting a better idea of what questions people are asking when it comes to advertising their business on Hulu. And this will help me with coming up with the questions or the keywords that I want to include in like a blog post. How all this ties together is, let's say I'm going to create a blog post. It's an informational blog post that I'm going to create for business owners, and I just want to guide them on how they can start advertising on Hulu and other streaming services. My ultimate job here is just to deliver value to them. So increase engagement on the website they like, they share, they comment. Ultimately, they start to know and trust me. Now, while I'm on this search, if I scroll down a little bit more, you'll see, and depending on the search term that's used, that we are definitely on the first page and the results tend to vary. But you'll see here, Design Loud, seven tips for advertising on Hulu and other streaming services. So we've already done this, right? I've done the research, I've ranked it, and I'll tell you that this is one of the pages that generate the most traffic to our site. Now, how this ends up playing out is I click through the page. And again, I'm just, it's optimized, it's ranking. I'm just trying to deliver value to them at this point. But in the background, what's also happening is that I've got my remarketing pixels set. So basically I can put this audience into a bucket for advertising on Google and streaming services and social media that says, hey, this is a business owner and they're interested in advertising on streaming services. So all this is already happening in the background because I've got my tracking pixel set up and I've created what I hope to be valuable content for the reader and I've pre-qualified them. I know at this point they're interested in advertising, possibly interested in advertising on streaming services. And because they're here, they're a business owner. So that's how this SEO kind of comes back full circle for me to help with generating organic and paid leads through our marketing. All right, so let's take a look at another way you can do this research. There's a website called Answer the Public. And so if I do that same search, advertise <laughs> on Hulu, and you can get to this website by going to answerthepublic.com. I'm going to make sure my uh, country is set to United States, my language is set, and hit search. Now, they have a pretty generous free tier option. And when you hit that, you can start to see what are some of the questions, prepositions, comparisons all related to advertising on Hulu. So I can get an idea of what people are asking about. The way this works is basically the darker the color, the darker the shading, the more search volume that specific term gets, right? Can you advertise on Hulu? Why advertise on Hulu? What does it cost to advertise on Hulu? And how to advertise on Hulu? These are examples of different questions people are asking online that I can ultimately add to my blog posts as like frequently asked questions. I can scroll down a little bit further. And of course I get some more information on this. So can you advertise on Hulu as an example? And depending on your search term, you may get more or less results here, but this is really good for establishing how much monthly search volume does this term get 
And then if I were to do anything like Google ads, how much is the average cost per click if I were to bid on that specific keyword? So those are a couple of the free tools. There's also one that's more of a freemium model. They give you a generous amount of information when it comes to your keyword research, but they do have a paid option as well. If you go and do a Google search for KW Finder, and that stands for Keyword Finder, you should land on the Mangul's website and you can type in a search term there, advertise on Hulu. And you can make it specific to a country, a city, et cetera. If I wanted to drill this down even further, I might type in something like digital marketing agency, and then I'll choose Wilmington NC as my keyword. Click find keywords. You should see some keyword variations there, and that includes the trends, how much search volume that particular keyword gets, what's the average cost per click for that. And then this last column here is keyword difficulty. So this is a scale, basically zero out of a hundred, and that will weight it on how difficult or easy that specific keyword is to rank for. So the higher the number, the more difficult that keyword is. So I can start making a copy of these keywords to get an idea on maybe some low hanging fruit, like this gets monthly 40 searches. I've got another one here, 40 monthly searches. I can continue going on or I can change my search term, make it a little more broad. If I expand this out to United States as an exaggerated example here, you'll see digital marketing agency that gets 38,000 monthly searches, almost 39,000 monthly searches, but it's also a medium difficulty. Now, what I would really want to be doing is looking at something like this that gets 300 monthly searches and it's a 26 on the difficulty scale. So that means it's relatively easy to rank for as well. And the keyword here being PPC agency near me. Now let's take a look into one of the paid tools. So if you're familiar with Ahrefs or SimRush, I prefer SimRush. I've used both of them. There are different people that prefer Ahrefs and that's totally cool. You get the same amount of information. But if I do something in SimRush using the keyword overview tool, I'll go to that tool and I'll type in advertise on Hulu. Now I can also break this down by specific city, municipality, county, country, et cetera, but I'm just going to roll with the U S I'll hit search. All right. And very similar to the KW finder tool. Now I am using the paid version of SimRush, So this gives me a little bit more information, but I can see that advertise on Hulu gets an average of 590 monthly searches. It's relatively difficult to rank for. The average cost per click is $23. And I can say that the user's intent is navigational and navigational means that the user wants to find specific information on a page or website. Now, what I love also about this tool and similar tools, cause Ahrefs will do the same thing is I can look under the keyword ideas and I can see some of the keyword variations. Sometimes what you'll find is that some variations have a higher search volume. And if it has a higher search volume and a lower keyword difficulty score, that is like a diamond in the rough. And you definitely want to focus on that and incorporate that into your SEO strategy. Additionally, I can find some questions here. So let's say I am creating a page or a post on my website with the primary focus keyword of advertise on Hulu. These may be some FAQs that I may wanna add into the website to address some of these people's questions, but also so I have the potential to rank for some of these search terms as well. Just because you focus on one primary keyword doesn't mean that your ranking is exclusive to just that keyword. Pretty much anything within that page, including the semantic keywords, you have the potential to rank for. Now, in terms of content pillars, think of this as like a hierarchical structure. So if advertise on Hulu is the primary keyword that I'm trying to, to start ranking for, I may have a page for advertising on Hulu. And then I may create some post or child pages based on these categories. In this example, the cost of advertising on Hulu, the ad preferences, Hulu ads versus no ads. How many ads are on Hulu? How often does Hulu play ads? Now I can click view all, I can get more information on that. But the basic concept here is that I'm using these child pages or posts to ultimately link to each other and then link back to the primary parent page of advertising on Hulu. 
And when you do that, that is establishing content pillars. And from a ranking standpoint, like Google goes out and crawls websites, it knows that this page, this top level parent page advertised on Hulu carries a lot more weight and priority because all these child pages link to it. So think of it as like a weighted scale. This would have more of a 10 and priority where it's super important where the child pages may have a five, right? Now I can also scroll down a little bit more and get some ideas on the uh, SERP, which stands for Search Engine Ranking Placement Analysis. And then I can look at like the keyword ad history. And of course, with SimRush and most of these other tools, like I can click through and I can get more information about this specific keyword. In this example, I'll click on view more and you'll see that brings me to the keyword magic tool. And from here, what I would generally start doing is adding my filters. I would say keyword difficulty. I want to be between very easy and medium. So I'm going to apply the keyword difficulty of zero to 50%. And that narrows my list substantially. So I have uh, a clearer focus. Now I can look through some of these, like how to advertise on Hulu. That gets uh, 50 difficulty score, 50%, and it gets 110 monthly searches. But those 110, that adds up. And when you have different keywords in that one article or pillar pages, you expand your potential to rank for those keywords as well. So let's say we have an idea of our keyword list. Now, how do we actually take this and implement it? Now I want to show you some tools using ChatGPT or your favorite AI tool. I'm basically going to walk you through constructing prompts that will help you when it comes to your SEO. All right, so head over to your favorite AI tool for this. I'll be using ChatGPT and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go down in the prompt box here and I'm going to start typing or in my case, pasting some prompts because these are prompts that I come back to and use over and over. Uh, and I've got various prompts for various things that I've created and fine tuned over the time that I've been working with ChatGPT. But to start things off, I'm going to tell ChatGPT who it is and then give it some context and what I need it to do. So to start my prompt, I'll say, you're an SEO expert. I need you to create SEO optimized meta titles and meta descriptions to help your site rank for the target keyword I provide you. Read the information below to get an idea about the company. And then I've got a placeholder here to insert the company name. So I'll do design loud and it's tone of voice and value propositions. The main products and services that are offered are, and then I'll insert my products and services. So website design and development, I'll do social media marketing, not worried about any typos, social media management, search engine optimization, paid advertising and graphic design. All right. So I've listed website design and development, social media marketing, social media management, search engine optimization, paid advertising, graphic design. Now I'm going to drop down a couple lines and I'm going to say the target audience is, and this would include things like the location, the interest, the age, etc. Okay. So the target audience is, and I've typed small business owners with at least five employees. They live and work in Wilmington NC. They primarily work in the home services, e-commerce and medical industries. They gross more than $1 million each year, and they have been in business for more than five years. They may have more than one shareholder or more than one location. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. But before I do as much information as you can give chat GPT, especially when it relates to things like your target audience, your tone of voice, et cetera, the more valuable the output is that comes to. All right. So my prompt just finished and it says, here are some SEO optimized meta titles and descriptions for each of design Loud's main services tailored to your target audience in Wilmington and C. So the first page being website design and development, the meta title, it suggests expert website design and development in Wilmington and C. The meta description, elevate your business with the design Loud's bespoke website design and development services crafted for Wilmington's thriving small businesses in home services, e-commerce, and medical sectors. Boost your online presence today. And you can see there where it's also completed the social media marketing, social media management, search engine optimization, the paid advertising, and the graphic design. Basically what it did was it took my list of services and products that I offered from my prompt and it created specific pages, meta titles, and meta descriptions for those products and services. Now you'll want to make sure you proofread these and make any adjustments. AI is definitely in its infancy stages. 
So don't take it verbatim. You want to make sure that this does reflect your tone of voice, your products, your services, et cetera. It should be a starting point, but it should not be completely used 100% without proofreading or checking. All right. So now that I've got the meta titles and meta descriptions for some of the products and services that I offer, let's go and create some meta titles, meta descriptions for some of those focus keywords that we've been looking at. And this is an example on how you can use ChatGPT to do that. So I'll paste in my prompt says, write a meta title and meta description around the primary focus keyword. Now, if you remember, I'm looking at my keyword research here. So let's say it's why are there advertisements on Hulu or how to advertise on Hulu. I'll go with the how to advertise on Hulu. So from my keyword research, I have an idea of what my focus keyword is. I'll come over here and replace the placeholder and hit enter. Now you can see I have a pretty good idea on my blog posts or uh, title that I would be creating if I were to pursue this. The meta title it's suggesting is how to advertise on Hulu, a comprehensive guide. And the description says, discover how to effectively advertise on Hulu with Design Loud's expert guide. Learn step-by-step -step strategies to reach a broader audience and enhance your advertising impact. Start maximizing your ad spend with our tailored insights for small businesses. Now, I can take this a step further before I get to actually writing the content, and I can ask ChatGPT, what are some semantic keywords to use based on my focus keyword? I'll hit enter, and this will give me some variations. Now, I could have uh, expanded that prompt a little bit more. I could have asked, what are some semantic keywords to use based on my focus keyword? Please include average search volume and keyword difficulty. And then ChatGPT would probably give me a table that in addition to the semantic keywords here, it would tell me how much average monthly search volume each one of these keywords gets and how difficult it is to rank for. Now, again, with what we have right now, what I would basically be doing is planning our next blog post. So I've got the topic and I've got a rough draft of a meta title or meta description. I have some semantic keywords that I can use here to include in that blog post to get it to rank better with all likelihood. Now, the next step I want to do is start creating the blog post. All right. So to get ChatGPT to start creating the content, I'm going to paste the following prompt. Uh, and feel free to modify this if you need to. This is one that works pretty well, especially with delivering some value-based content. So to get started with this, I'm going to type the following prompt. You're the top blog copywriter in the world with expertise in creating blog posts that rank highly in SEO. Above is a rough outline and semantic keywords that I want you to use to craft a phenomenal blog post. The main keyword for this blog post is, and then I'll insert the placeholder. So how to advertise on Hulu. Drop down a couple lines. I'll continue this prompt by saying the writer of this blog post has a distinct voice that is intelligent, confident, and passionate. They are unafraid to share their experiences and opinions, and they are well-versed in, and then replace the category here. I'll say marketing and advertising. Their tone is conversational yet professional, and they are not afraid to inject humor or personality into the writing. To write in a similar style of voice and tone, start by being confident in your knowledge and expertise. Be unafraid to share your experiences and opinions and use a conversational yet professional tone. Inject personality and humor where appropriate. Don't be afraid to be passionate about your topic. Make sure your writing is clear, concise, and well-constructed and use examples and antidotes to illustrate your points. Overall, aim to be informative, engaging, and authentic in your writing. Your post should show in a clear, actionable, step-by-step -step way how to use the strategy. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and let ChatGPT do its thing. All right, so I just let ChatGPT finish its article, and at first glance, it did a phenomenal job with at least a rough draft to get me started. So the title it's suggesting is How to Advertise on Hulu, Your Ultimate Guide to Capturing Audiences. I'll read the opening paragraph here. It says, so you've decided to plunge into the world of Hulu advertising. Great choice. Hulu isn't just a powerhouse for catching up on the handsmaid's tale or getting your Saturday night live fix. It's also a fertile ground for advertisers aiming to connect with a diverse and engaged audience. In this guide, I'm taking you through a journey on how to craft compelling ads that not only capture attention, but also drive action all on Hulu. Let's dive into this, shall we? 
And then it gives a valuable, actionable step-by-step guide. So step one, understanding Hulu's audience, and then it gives some supporting text and key takeaways. Step two, choose the right ad format, again, with some supporting text and key takeaways. Step three, crafting your message. Step four, setting up your campaign. Step five, analyzing and optimizing. And then it provides a good summary at the very end there. Now, from this, what I could do is I can ask ChatGPT to expand, for example, on step five and give me more content. I can ask ChatGPT to give me some recommendations for some creatives and images or videos that I can use in this blog post. I can ask ChatGPT who or what does it recommend for outbound links, external links that I can use to link to other places because each optimized page or post should contain internal, external links. I could also ask it to suggest some internal links based on my website and how it's currently set up. Now, this is all great. This is a great starting point. I would copy this over to a Google Doc and just start working through it or coordinating with my team any way I needed to. But what if you already have a piece of content that's been created that may not be performing that well and you need to basically rewrite it to try to get it to rank better? This next prompt that I'm going to share with you basically takes an existing page or post and it's probably better to use towards like blog posts and it will rewrite it in an optimized format for you. So I'm going to paste the prompt here and read through it. Please insert the following keywords that are separated by commas into the article below and also bold and underline the inserted keywords inside the article. Do it in a way that keeps the original article exactly the same with absolutely minimal changes. Here are the list of keywords to include in the article. So from here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to grab this list of semantic keywords that I used earlier. But maybe you don't have that list. You can run a separate chat GPT thread or you can ask chat GPT what are some semantic keywords. You can even search on Ahrefs or SimRush to get this list of semantic keywords. The important thing here is that you have the keywords and you have the actual article. So now I'll just go to my article and I'll use this one on my website. You can see I've just copied all the text here. Come back over to ChatGPT and where I say, here's the article or the link to the article, I'm just gonna paste that content in. Now I'm gonna hit enter and watch ChatGPT basically optimize this post based on the instructions that I gave it. All right, so that just finished and you can see here now, granted, this was taking existing content that we had on our blog post and just optimizing it further um, and including things like bolded and italicize some of the keywords and the semantic keywords that we use. But as I scroll through this, you can notice how much it actually did bold and italicize with minimal changes, but it continued to optimize the blog post based on what was performing or what it thought would be performing the best. All right, so we took a look at how you can go about creating content. We looked at how you can optimize existing content. Now let's take a step back and look at how we can conduct like a full SEO audit on an existing website. So to do this, it's probably best if we go ahead and just open a new chat panel here in ChatGPT or go to your favorite AI tool. I'm going to paste the following prompt in. And basically the prompt says, you are a search engine optimization expert with a focus on digital marketing. I want you to create a detailed SEO plan for, and then there's a placeholder for client business. So let's say I will use one of my other companies here, Swell Systems and website. And then I'm going to replace the placeholder with the website URL, swellsystem.com, using the details below. The SEO plan should focus mainly on search engine optimization and include ideas for pillar pages and linking, content analysis, and audits of the existing website, internal and external linking ideas and examples, technical audit of the website, and backlinking recommendations. If I go ahead and hit enter here, I should get a general SEO plan that I can follow step-by-step -step with recommendations. All right, so just finish my detailed SEO plan and you can see here that I have an, an idea of pillar pages and linking strategy, which will go through each one of my top level pages and give me an idea on how to set up that hierarchy and how to utilize the links. So you can see both internal and external linking strategies. 
And then it performed a content analysis and audit. So it examined my existing content and gave me an audit based on that and then gave me some ideas for new content ideas. Then it performed a technical SEO audit. And this looked at things like website page speed and page load time, the mobile optimization, the site maps, and the robots text file. Following that, it gives me an idea on any internal and external linking ideas that I can utilize and any backlinking recommendations that I can use to try to get backlinks back to my website. Finally, it tells me how I can go about setting up the monitoring and the reporting of this so that I can analyze the traffic, the volume, and the growth that I potentially have. Now, what you would do with this information, if you're more on the do-it-yourself tech-savvy side, you can definitely start working through this list on your own, bits and pieces, or the entirety of this list. But this is also something that you can share with an agency or a contractor or a freelancer or even your uncle's nephew if they are computer literate and they want to roll up their sleeves. Now, keep in mind, you can continue to expand on this. So if I really like the idea of some of the content suggestions it gave me and new content ideas, I can say, Give me more blog posts or examples of videos and webinars. The important thing here is that we've established the thread in ChatGPT that now I can go back and reference this to start giving me ideas on how do I improve my page load time or how do I make it more responsive or how do I set up the internal links? Where should those link to and where should you know they link from? So there's a lot of potential on continuing to expand this. But the next thing I want to show you is how you can use this next prompt to create a list of blog post ideas, including things like the keyword clusters or semantic keywords, the pillar pages, and the focus keywords. So following this same thread, I'll type in the next prompt. Give me some ideas for blog posts with titles and focus keywords that can be used to link internally to some of the primary pages of the website you helped me with for ranking on search and their keyword clusters. I'll go ahead and hit enter. So ChatGPT just finished, and here's an example of what it gave me. It says, here are some blog post ideas with titles and focus keywords that can link internally to the primary pages of your website. The first one being business management software overview. An example of a blog post title, top 10 benefits of using business management software in 2024. The focus keywords would include business management software, Benefits of Business Software 2024. The internal link it's suggesting is to link to the Business Management Software Overview Pillar page. You can see there that it does a second one, a second blog post, how Swell Systems transforms small businesses, focus keywords being Swell Systems, small business management, business software solutions, and it's suggesting I link to the Business Management Software Overview Pillar page and success stories on the Industry Solutions page. That continues to go on for a few more, but then as I scroll down a little bit more, it gives me some ideas of the keyword clusters. So for example, cluster one, business management software, the primary keyword would be business management software and some of the semantic or the secondary keywords would include business software solutions, small business management, benefits of business software. And it continues to go on with like project management tools as cluster two, Cluster three is CRM or customer relationship manager. Cluster four, cluster five, et cetera. Now, if that part confuses you, just take a moment to remember that list on SimRush that we looked at earlier, where it showed basically the hierarchy of those different keywords. So this is a great list, but let's take it one step further. I want you to type in the following prompt. Create a hierarchical ordered list of keyword clusters that include things like samples of content to write to rank for those clusters and include a meta title and meta description for each one. Also include whether the type of keyword and content should be informational, navigational, commercial, or transactional, because this will help give you an idea of the search intent from the user. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that ChatGPT just finished my hierarchical ordered list of keyword clusters. So to read through some of these, for example, cluster one being business management software, the primary keyword would be business management software. The user intent would be informational. So it's users who are searching for information and they're going to Google to do this search. Some content samples I may use here, top 10 benefits of using business management software in 2024 and how Swell Systems transforms small businesses. 
Here are uh, the meta title and meta description, the title being business management software, transform your business efficiency. The description being discover the top benefits of business management software and how small systems can transform your small business. Learn more about our solutions. Then it proceeds to give me uh, additional details on the other keywords it created, so project management tools, the CRM, industry specific solutions, software integrations, customer support and resources. And then I have a detailed keyword clusters and content samples following that down below. So with this information, this hopefully gives you an idea of a content strategy that you can deploy over the next few weeks, months, or the next year. You have things in here in terms of what is the topic of the page? What's the primary keyword and secondary keywords? What are some example meta titles and meta descriptions that you can use? And as we previously saw, you can then use one of those prompts to start creating the content for this that you can later go back and edit and refine and make sure you personalize. And if you remember the primary goal, make it valuable to the reader. So one last thing I'd like to show you before digging into uh, the chatbot and hopefully how that chatbot makes this a whole lot easier and organized for you. I wanna show you how to analyze an existing page for its on-page SEO and ranking. And so in order to do that, I'm going to paste the following prompt here and basically I'm telling ChatGPT, I want you to look at the following page and the information and analyze the page for SEO optimizations we can do to improve ranking. Then I put page title and I would replace the placeholder, primary keyword, replace the placeholder, page URL, and then semantic keywords. You'll see I've replaced my placeholders here. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. All right. So ChatGPT just finished and you can see here, I have a really good outline of next steps that I can do to optimize this specific page on my website. So this says SEO optimizations for uh, my homepage. The page title currently is all in one business management system. The primary keyword I'm looking for is CRM for small business. And then I've got the page URL. As far as the analysis and recommendations, it says title tag optimization. It gives me the current title, the recommended title, and the reason behind the change and the suggestion. Same thing happens with the meta description. It tells me to look at my heading tags, my H1, H2, H3s. Ensure there's a clear H1 tag for the primary keyword and then use the H2 and H3 tags for semantic keywords. And it gives me an idea of the recommended structure. It gives me ideas on content optimization as far as the keyword density, the use of semantic keywords, and how to enrich that content. It also gives me suggestions for linking internally to other parts of the website, how I can optimize my images, what kind of technical SEO optimizations I can make as it relates to site speed, mobile friendliness, and structured data. It gives me ideas for a backlinking strategy. And then lastly, it gives me ideas for sample content that I can use to establish those content pillars and that hierarchy that we've spoken about. This is a really good next step. And basically there's nothing stopping me from doing this for each page on my website. I can take that same prompt and ask it to do the second and third page or go through every page or post on my website to give me the recommendations. And then how you choose to implement that information is entirely up to you. We've talked about copying it into a Word doc and sharing that folder with somebody like an agency or a freelancer or a contractor, or just share this video with them and let them do this research for you and these steps for you. So now I want to take an opportunity to share this chatbot with you that I've created. Basically, all the prompts that I've created as it relates to SEO, I have gone ahead and put together in a chatbot, which also includes, I think, my unique process and our team's unique process. Uh, for doing this. And so to get started, I would just make sure you have access to the chat bot. If you don't just join our free community, there's access there at the entrepreneur bootcamp podcast.com. And you can get access to this chat bot. The name of this chat bot currently is called SEO expert helper. I couldn't come up with anything more creative than that, but it's an SEO assistant for keyword research, content writing, and optimization tips. And so there's a button here to get started. Basically it's a conversational type chat bot. You click get started and it's going to ask you how it can help you. And you should have a few different choices there. So for example, do you need help with creating new content, optimizing existing content, or would you like an SEO audit of your website? And you can just type in 
whatever you need help with. So we'll just say creating new content. And once you start to tell it a little bit more, again, it's that whole conversational dialogue. It'll ask you for things like what's the subject matter of the content you want to create and can you provide a URL for the website? And the URL is going to be helpful because it's going to analyze your writing style and your tone of voice. So let's say advertising on Hulu. And then for two, the website is designloud.com. Hit enter. Now it's giving me the website writing style, tone of voice, the keyword research. So it's conducting that keyword research for me so that I don't need a tool like SimRush or anything like that. It's using the information available to it. And then it's giving me ideas for the content creation. So it's asking me if I would like help with creating the content. I would say yes. Please help me create the content. All right, now I can see that it has created the hierarchical ordered list of keyword clusters along with samples of content, meta titles, meta descriptions based on the focus keyword of advertising on Hulu. And as I scroll down, you'll see some of those suggestions here below as well as like a content outline. Now towards the very end of this, it's also giving me an idea of some pillar pages that I can set up to help rank for this as well as some internal links and outbound links. The next prompt it's asking me for is, would you like to proceed with writing any specific section in detail or do you need any other assistance? Yes, please write blog posts for me. So I just completed the blog posts, the title, Advertising on Hulu, a comprehensive guide. It gives me the introduction and then it breaks down Hulu advertising costs, some factors influencing the costs, types of Hulu ads, gives me the different types of Hulu ads. When you're looking at this, though, I think also what's important to note is that this is each one tag. So it's also formatting it in a way that's optimized. This is my heading two tag. This is a heading two tag. This would be a heading three tag. This is a bulleted list. This is going to help with the um, schema, the rich snippets that show up, the types of Hulu ads. This also will help. And how this translates into Google search results is basically the most coveted spot. You've got what's now this AI uh, generative preview, and then you've got the unordered list down below or the numbered list. This helps you with getting into that numbered list. So you basically achieve the zeroth position of Google, the very first result when you include that type of markup on your page, which ChatGPT has already done for us. And you can see down below as I continue to scroll that it did a really good job. Now I can continue to expand on this Again, you can ask for additional sections, more details on benefits of advertising on Hulu, whatever else you need help with. Now let's take a look at some of the other uh, couple of features of this custom bot that I've created. So I'll click get started and let's say this time we need help with optimizing existing content. It's going to ask me what the URL is and what is the primary focus keyword. So let's just go with swellsystem.com and the focus keyword business management system. Hit enter. You can see here that it did a really good job on helping me to optimize my existing content by analyzing the focus keyword I was going for and the URL that I gave it. That included things like keyword research, which includes the focus keyword and semantic keywords, content optimization ideas, which included title tags, meta tags, gave me suggestions that I could use to replace that with, what my heading tags should be, how I can enhance my content, internal link examples and external link examples, and then technical SEO checks. It also gives me the option to continue this conversation through next steps. But the last part I want to show you, the third part about this chatbot is how to create an SEO audit. So going back to the chat button, click and get started. This time I'm going to choose to give me an SEO audit of a website. So I'll choose option three here, conduct an SEO audit of a website. This is going to ask me what the URL is to the website. And I'll paste in my website here and let it run its audit. So as this continues to finish, it's already giving me great results in terms of an SEO audit of the website. It's broken down into five sections. That's technical SEO, on-page SEO, content analysis, internal, external links, and backlinking. Now this is looking at it from a whole website perspective. But from the technical SEO, it's telling me page load speed, mobile friendliness, SSL, crawlability, indexing. On-page SEO, it gives me my meta title and meta description, as well as some suggestions, including headings and the URL structure. And then it's looking at my content analysis, like how the quality of my content is, the usage of keywords, as well as internal and external links, and backlinking recommendations. 
as I scroll down a little bit more, it actually is giving me specific information from my website. So it tells me what my mobile um, page speed is, my desktop page speed, and what recommendations to implement. My mobile friendliness, it's saying that I'm mobile friendly, so I'm good there, that I have an SSL certificate, that it is able to be crawled and indexed by search engines. Now it's grading my on-page SEO and showing me what my title tags and meta descriptions should be, my heading tags, URL structure, quality of content, keyword usage, internal and external links, and backlink recommendations. At the very end, it includes some actionable steps based on this analysis that it suggests that I should implement and improve on. So again, you can go through this video course. You can copy and paste all these chat prompts that I've given you here. You can sign up for our free community, and that does include a lot of the prompts that I've included in this video, even some that you haven't seen yet. Or you can sign up for the community and download the chat bot that I've created, which will walk you through how to do this. And as you've seen, I was able to get some really valuable information in less than 10 minutes by using this chatbot. Hey, make sure you subscribe for more insights. And if you like this episode, consider sharing it with a friend. Join our free community at entrepreneurbootcamppodcast.com and let's start building a great business together.